Technical issues. It's always something. Anyways, uh, Galactus Duyana, Merry Christmas. It is the second day of Christmas. Uh, for those of you who uh, are a Christmas person and like to celebrate Christmas with uh, the old Christmas, uh, for those of you who already or ordinarily celebrate old Christmas, once again, Merry Christmas, Galactus Duyana. It is, uh, this is the BTS vlog for Wednesday, January 8th. And we're still within Vlogmas. Cool. Uh, so let's get it on with the time and date stamp. It's 11 hours and 21 minutes into the day of Wednesday, January 8th, 2014. That's the time and date stamp there. Uh, all vlogs, because they are logs, require a time and date stamp. And I forgot to start my timer. <laughs> now I gotta start it out. Anyways, on to the uh, 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 issue of the day. This is the first opening segment. This is the opening segment for today's uh, BTS vlog. Uh, hopefully, things will go better. I have a new production schedule uh, set up. The goal is to bring in some of the production notes from other shows into BTS vlogs. This gives us more to talk about. And hopefully things will go better. You know, if, if I can do some of the notes in here while I'm doing the BTS vlog, that actually improves the uh, the the metrics required to finish and do uh, other vlogs, other 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 shows. So um, to the, the first uh, BTS, the first uh, uh, production notes we're going to talk about in today's vlog is the show Ubuntu Beastie Unix Tal. Uh, I've been sort of really behind on my schedule, so that has kind of even fa that has fallen off. But uh, uh, the work hasn't stopped on the Ubuntu BSD Unix at all. It just simply uh, wasn't talked about. So we're going to talk about it now. Uh, I've been watching uh, more Android TV, uh, more on YouTube. I've been watching uh, different uh, shows on Android. Uh, where we're going with Ubuntu BSD Unix at all is that we're going to look at. Uh, the, the development path that I'm taking, and that is bringing Android into fully into line with uh, with uh, Linux. Right now, uh, Android is not fully in line with Linux. Android is uh, highly dependent on OEMs and uh, the device manufacturers for what allowances you're going to have or not going to have. So, you uh, Android can be as open and free as Linux, or it can be very restrictive like Windows. And uh, the goal here is to sort of unify the Android and I'm going to choose the Ubuntu platform. That's the direction we're going. So we're going from Android to Ubuntu. Ubuntu will be the underlying Linux operating system. Android will be the user interface. And then uh, from there, the goal is to uh, basically have a cross development so that you can have a... Uh, a migration or, or, or a hybridization between desktops. Desktops in the, or, or, or UIs, user interface, uh, in Linux should be open and customizable. So if you have, let's say, a primarily a, a, a Android user interface, but you want to borrow from the user interface uh, GNOME or, or KDE, this is what the, the, the sort of the next phase. Once the UI is mated with the uh, Ubuntu, the Android UI is mated with the Ubuntu, uh, root the core uh, from there the goal will be to sort of bring in the hybridization bring in the co cross operational uh, uh, sort of cross compatibility uh, compatibility uh, so that you can run uh, gnome apps on there and uh, KDE apps uh, once that's done I think we'll have a full you know full-blown uh, Android Linux operating system that's where we're going and then from there it's going to go out and try to see is how many devices I can get it onto. But this is this we're talking years up. But this this is how software development goes. Software development is not something that's done uh, 
Well, if it's a small project, yeah, you can do it small and very quick. But if it's a large project, you really want to take care of a lot of these these sort of these preliminary details. Uh, what's the user going to see? How they're going? How is how is the, the map going to work out? Where are you going to be going from this? So you do spend a lot of time in the underlying development before you actually get down to the coding, and then you want to test out and see what's out there. What you want to see, sort of, uh, and this is what we're doing here is, is uh, rather than simply just being a, a fanfare for different Linux uh, Android apps. Uh, I'm going to take a, look at, a serious look at these Android apps and tell you what's good about an Android app and what's not good about an Android app. If I find an Android app to be really bad, then I will say that an, an, this Android app is really bad. And if I say an Android app is really good, that's because I'm using it and I've actually tested it out. It's in a working production environment and it's working very well. And so this is the way I'm going to be sort of bringing uh, 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 Ubuntu BSD Unix et al. really into... Uh, uh, the uh, a different phase as compared to everybody else, what everybody else. I've looked around and s saw what everybody else was doing. I said I wanted to do something different with the show, uh, Ubuntu BSD Unix et al., and that's what I'm going to do. And, that's, and, and again, it's going to be on that development path from Android to Linux, and then uh, also looking at the Android apps, looking how the apps actually work on different devices or if they don't work on different devices. Um, I will also go over the production notes for Beauty and the Geek. Uh, that's sort of on the schedule to be done as well. Uh, I want to see what can be done to really improve Beauty and the Geek. Uh, I still have, so what will happen is, is the goal is to get, in addition to getting out a Ubuntu BSD Unix to tell this week, the goal is also get out a Beauty and the Geek uh, this week as well. I, but I think the problem is I'm going to get one out, but it's not going to be exactly what I want because I still have to work on some of the graphics. Uh, there, is, there are a number of graphic issues in terms of the overlays that I still have to work out in terms of how they work into the production schedule. Once that's done, then I should be able to start producing uh, better Beauty and the Geeks and uh, get it, getting it going from there. Other no news is on the channel news is that uh, I am going to be doing more production work as you see things that this week hopefully this week will be will sort of set the tone to the, t the type of production work and the amount of production work I can actually get done. Uh, and if that's the case, if, if we do get a good production schedule going for uh, Cyborg Alpha TV, then you'll start seeing more shows emerge. You'll see more content emerge. And as I said, because it's video on demand, you can choose what you want to watch when you want to watch it. And you can choose as much as you want to watch or as little as you want. You don't, you don't have to watch the entire half-hour show. You can watch bits and pieces of it at different times. So... Um, that's sort of where we're going with with Cyborg Alpha TV. We're going towards the, the a full, hopefully a full production schedule uh, by the end of the month, by February, which we should be at a full production schedule. Uh, we'll see what happens. That's the goal. But you take it day by day, week by week. Anyways, I'm going to end it here for now. I will come back and we will talk more about uh, the, our topic uh, from Instavlogs. We're looking at our... Uh, this of Log Notes, talking about Chris Hedges, uh, Sam Harris, and Christopher Hitchens. This is in regards to uh, some of the points that we need to sort of uh, hash over and uh, go from there. Anyways, that's it for now. I will talk to you in the next segment in a couple hours. Well... It is a longer day today than I did yesterday. Uh, I got up around uh, 10 o'clock. It is now about 7.30. That's about a nine and a half hour day. And slowly but surely, I'm ramping my day up. Uh, yesterday I did a six hour day. I was able to be up for six hours, six, seven hours yesterday. Today is uh, another two hours, so uh, nine hours is good. Anyways, I will give you the time and date stamp. It is 19 hours and 39 minutes into the day of Wednesday, January 8th, 2014. That's great. Uh, it's been a pretty good day. Uh, I got most of what I wanted done done. I decided that uh, the BTS vlog is going to be for January 8th and 9th. Uh, one of the reasons is, is I don't think there's enough, currently enough material uh, to put a half hour in every single day. 
So if the BTS vlogs, if I do say two day a two day vlog, that would be give me enough hour, you know, give me enough time to uh, put in uh, the uh, for mm, give me enough time to put in uh, the half hour that I'm aiming for. But that doesn't mean that's just about it because this week there's gonna uh, 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 there's gonna be. A Ubuntu BSD Unit of Tau uh, episode coming. I've finished the production notes for that. I've also done the work for InstaVlogs as well. So even though tomorrow on uh, January 9th is isn't, isn't going to be a BTS vlog upload, there is going to be Ubuntu BSD Unit of Tau upload, and there's possibly going to be an InstaVlog upload as well. So there'll be two uploads tomorrow, uh, and that means uh, the, if if the if the goal moves as I hope it does. Uh, I'll be doing, uh, uh, I would have uploaded uh, four, four, four shows this week in terms of different, different, uh, uh, I'll have the BTS vlogs, uh, Ubuntu BSD, Unit of Tal, um, it's the vlogs, and Beauty and the Geek should be up this week. And if everything goes all well, I, I should hopefully keep that up. If I can keep that up, that's about four, that's about four shows on a weekly basis. Uh, don't know if we can do that. We'll see. And then we'll go from there on out. Uh, no, we got time still. <laughs> we got the time to kill. Um, what else did I do today? Oh yeah, I worked in the kitchen diner. I did. I made an excellent roast beef sandwich. I've been doing my own roast beef now. Uh, rather than buying uh, the roast beef cold cut, uh, I've been buying the whole roast beef and making uh, my own cured meats. So that uh, putting it in a deli slicer and then I have my own uh, cold cuts. It's actually significantly cheaper to do it that way than it is to do it uh, by it sliced already. To give an example, you spend ten dollars. Uh, and you'll get maybe 400 grams of meat. Get, uh, spend $13 and you'll get more than one kilogram of worth of meat. And this is because we're in Canada here, they do it in, in, in kilograms. So give an example, um, per pound, about a pound. Um, one kilogram is just about two pounds. So I get two pounds uh, of uh, roast beef cold cut at the same price I would pay for let's say one pound so that's not bad that's, that's actually pretty good uh, I really have uh, a good time having that meat and good it, it does take a while to make the roast beef though it takes about three days to make, make the roast beef you have to first uh, when you buy the meat you have to uh, prepare the spices roll it in the spices and then put it back in the fridge and leave it for about a day. Then it takes about uh, eight hours in the oven at just about 180 degrees. Then after the eight hours, it takes another 24 hours in the fridge uh, for it to uh, properly, for the flavor to properly set up. And then after, after 24 hours in the fridge, that's when you slice it. And it comes out pretty good, so I'm happy with it. I will show you possibly. Yeah, I'll probably I'll show you a sandwich tomorrow, and we'll go from go from there. Cause uh, right now, it says it's nearing the end of the day. I'm getting really tired, so that's as about that's about as much as much energy I have for today. So I'll see you in the morning. I'll vlog again, do the um, the the third segment, and then um, the fourth segment later on in the day. All right, take it easy. Alrighty, it is 23 hours and 47 minutes into the day of Thursday, January 9th, 2014, and I was supposed to do this segment earlier, actually earlier in the day, but I've had one another one of those uh, particular days where, uh, they're bizarre days. Just, just to put it, put that simply. They're just extremely bizarre. 
where I spend most of the day wandering around the stacks, my library stacks, uh, quite aimlessly. In other words, there's no particular direction. There was no particular direction for the for the day. But my mind was continuously in thought, just sort of thinking about this and thinking about that. Um, it just wasn't a day to sort of sit down and be really productive. It was kind of um, I call it a rainy day or a cloudy day inside my mind. It it just you just feel like one of those days where uh, it was just sort of cloudy all day. I don't know why I have that mood, but that's just one of the moods I have. Uh, I had work to do, but a large chunk of the work that I had to get done just simply didn't get done. Uh, instead, um, I was primarily distracted, mostly distracted today, and the end result was simply a wandering around of uh, uh, of my library stacks in the way I go do my library work. Uh, it was no, I had no particular direction today, which it was completely random. So I just picked, picked the direction and moved into it. <laughs> and the bizarre thing is, is that you never know where you're going to end up. And you just sort of jump from link to link to link to link. Just sort of wandering around. And I wound up uh, listening to this uh, music group called Grimes. Well, it's not really a group, it's, it's particularly a girl uh, with a synthesizer, with, with, with well, a modern-day synth. And when you listen to her, she sounds like a combination of uh, Tangerine Dream and Vangelis, if you, if you know who those are. And the bizarre thing, she's coming, I think, I, I don't know whether it's coming back again or whether or not this is sort of like, I would say this is more of an alternative, an alt-indie group. Uh, if if you want to call it that, uh, quite, quite, I found it quite interesting to see that, uh, you know, where are these influences that you know with electronic music that came out of the '60s, where the uh, where the music ended up, and the thing is, is you could sort of trace a whole history of this music, all the way back I think into the '30s. Uh, I can't remember when the theremin was developed because. This type of music, the type of music that Grimes is doing, is uh, related to, with, to the theremin. Let me just see here if I can get some information on the theremin, on when the theremin was actually developed. Any theremin? Uh, let's see, do we have a time? Theremin. Okay. Let's see here. Theremin, uh, do we have a particular date, time and date for this? We have a date. We don't need a time. Ah, here we go. 1928, yeah, so just about the 1930s. Uh, I guess there was a whole bunch of experimentation in the 20s and 30s. Uh, with electronic music, the origin of electronic music goes all the way back to there. And the question is whether or not uh, uh, how many people actually know that. This is kind of a bizarre, it's sort of like an offshoot of music if you want to sort of um, if you want to kind of uh, look into the history of this, this is something that uh, I, I, I never it, it, electronic music, music for me was popular enough it didn't really matter that there weren't a lot of people into it what mattered to me was that uh, that you did have that you liked it that, that I enjoyed this particular music so uh, this is something uh, oh, that I found interesting and this music, uh, Grimes, 
kind of, uh, uh, as you say, harkens back to that particular point in time or looks back towards the theremin. And basically, you start as I said, in a completely random direction. And I wasn't going to vlog right now. I was going to wait and vlog tomorrow, but uh, I'll do the closing segment, the uh, ending segment for this vlog tomorrow morning. Because I really don't, I'm not in the mood to sort of uh, stay up any later and, go, and, and do this. So, um, let's see if I can get back on schedule for tomorrow. I don't know what's going to happen. Because uh, right now I'm just sort of in this wandering around mood. And this, th th this wandering around mood in many ways is uh, quite destructive because this is how I end up... Uh, really throwing my sleep patterns out of whack because I'm, I'm I'm sort of in this sort of twilight zone where uh, I'm somewhat lucid in my thoughts but I'm also in the sort of uh, state uh, of mind that um, uh, sort of keeps me wandering down these these bizarre paths and I have no idea where it's going to end or when it's going to end. And this is what sort of pushes me, in some cases, to spend all night. And I could be here till 9 o'clock in the morning uh, working on this. But we'll see what happens. I'm not feeling uh, energetic, energetic enough for that. But the thing is, the question was, do I paddle on or, you know, at the pace I'm moving now, or do I just simply quit and go to bed? I have no idea. Anyways, I'll tell you. I'll tell you tomorrow morning what happens, whether I uh, stayed up all night or um, went to bed. All right, take it easy, and no, uh, don't, don't forget we're still in our Christmas spirit. So, collectors, collectors, do you know? <laughs>
I've decided to make uh, Ubuntu BSD and as a towel a bi-weekly thing rather than weekly just because I'm not too sure how much content we actually have for Ubuntu BSD Unisic like Tile, whether or not we do have enough, I do, I do have enough content for a weekly show. Right now, I want to see if I can do two, uh, one, um, every two weeks. If I can get every two weeks done, then we can sort of uh, consider working up to a weekly uh, show. What else is there? <laughs> Um, oh yeah, I've got work to do on InstaVlog, so there should be an InstaVlog out this week. And there should be more InstaVlogs out next week. As for Beauty and the Geek, I'm still working on it. Um, one of the issues that I have is a lot of the lists that I had worked on earlier, these are sort of the, uh, the, the videos that I had done, are now getting old. Too old to put up. I mean, uh, why put up a fall, uh, uh, fashion thing now when it's February or in January so uh, I'm gonna have to sort of retool things sort of rejig the, the uh, production notes for uh, Beauty and the Geek so Beauty and the Geek is not production note ready although it's the vlog so basically we have uh, you want to be the unit to tell uh, that's uh, production note ready it's the vlogs is production note ready and just simply means to be moved over to uh, the editing bay. But Beauty and the Geek really does need some uh, more tweaking to get it to a point where it needs, where, where kind of sort of uh, bring it to the point where uh, it can be produced. It's not there yet, uh, but I'm, that, I don't know whether I can get it done this week or I can get it done early on Monday. I'm going to have to sit down and take a, take a look at it and see what, what I have. Uh, if things can be cut out, something can get expanded so that we get a good half hour show. The other thing I did today is is work on um, my IPTV today. I did some more work on IPTV. And it, 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 it's kind of, kind of come to the point where I've got uh, more content on my IPTV than I did on ever, ever had on cable. And the amount of uh, content that I have on cable is now dwarfed by what I have on IPTV. So there is no, myself, there's no missing cable at all anymore. It's just simply now all IPTV. And the thing is, is that the Asian IPTV choices are just literally kicking everybody else's butt. And while well, we're still struggling with 720p, in terms of the data that, flow, that can flow across a network, as a matter of fact, it, it, the the the, uh, the Asians are now at 2K and 4K resolutions, not just uh, not 1080p. Uh, we're just we're just sort of getting to 1080p right now across your uh, mobile networks, the capacity that it can handle. Uh, Asia is at 2K and 4K. Uh, video resolution that can, that its networks can handle. In other words, we're continuously, bit by bit, falling behind Asia in terms of the uh, connectivity and the options that you have on mobile data networks. Uh, but it's interesting to sort of see how we think of ourselves as such tactical geniuses, and yet we're so far behind. So that's the sort of the thing I'm working on. Uh, I'll show this in the Ubuntu BSD and Unix Excel, looking at IPTV, looking at some of the options out there, some of the problems with IPTV, and some of the bad choices that actually developers make. It is, it is an issue when you're a developer that you really, really do need to pay attention to uh, certain problems presented by the Android environment. Uh, I'm not even going to talk about uh, Apple at all, iOS. Because iOS is so closed source that it's it's not even worth talking about. Well, Android has a good potential to be, you know, a good open source option. At this point in time, right now, Android is kind of falling short because there's a lot of bad developers out there. And that's where the whole issue is right now. It's, it's just bad development. is sort of plaguing the Android platform. 
anyways, uh, that's it for now. Uh, I'm gonna go back to bed. I have a short day, had a short day today, and I will see you for tomorrow's BTS vlog, which will be the BTS vlog for the weekend. All right, take it easy. Democratic Earth. Earth.